I am always looking for new and innovative ways to teach. This summer, Picha Kucha, one technique that focuses on expressing ideas concisely and precisely, kept coming up. As I learned more about Picha Kucha, I became more and more excited about it and how we could use it at the School of Nursing. So what is Picha Kucha? Although it sounds like my son's favorite Pokemon, it's not Pikachu. Instead, it is a presentation style that started in Japan when a group of designers gathered to meet, network, and show their work in public. A Picha Kucha presentation is limited to 20 images that are shown for only 20 seconds. If you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, right, how can I limit what I need to teach to 20 images that are only shown for 20 seconds each? That means I only have 400 seconds or a little more than six minutes to get my ideas across. Nursing content is so complicated. How in the world could this ever work? And then I thought about how much our students need to know. As nurse educators, we have to help our students learn how to focus on what is most important so they can connect the dots in clinical practice and make the best decisions for their patients, themselves, and their practice setting wherever they end up working. So here it goes. I'm going to use my Picha Kucha to share with you my ideas for this year. Last year at this time, we implemented the School of Nursing Strategic Plan. The four important areas in the strategic plan were identified through conversations I had with all of you and discussing your thoughts and areas of opportunity for the School of Nursing. The key outcomes of our strategic plan build upon our strengths and will help us continue to fulfill our mission. Our focus on faculty development, process improvement, student recruitment and retention, and research and scholarship led to some amazing accomplishments last year, and I can't wait to see where we go this year. I am so excited. In addition to attending some amazing conferences this summer, I also evaluated current evidence of the cultures of highly productive teams. Don't get me wrong, we are a highly productive team and I'm so honored to get to work with y'all. Your commitment to nursing education inspires me every day, but I also believe that even the best teams can always improve. During my research, Amy Battle sent me a link to a TED Talk by Jim Tam. In his talk, Jim referenced a recent study led by a genetic researcher at Purdue University. This researcher noticed that there were two basic groups of chickens red zone chickens who actively sabotaged each other's egg production, and green zone chickens who got along with each other. After separating the chickens into the two groups and studying them for a year, the geneticists found the green zone chickens' egg production went up 260% when the red zone chickens were removed from their group. The red zone chickens literally pecked each other to death. The results of this study directly translate into the world of higher education. Universities that are more hostile and focus on internal competitiveness produce negative red zone behavior, while green zone universities that are skilled at collaboration ultimately produce more eggs, or in our case, happier students and successful programs. Increasing collaboration improves trust, cooperation, and just makes work a lot more fun. Dr. Rose Rivers, the CEO of Restoring Joy to Leadership, was the keynote speaker at the ACN conference. She was inspiring and led me to reflect on what I can do to help our School of Nursing become better and to foster an environment that is full of students, faculty, and staff who are like the Green Zone Collaborative Chickens. Dr. Rivers said that as a leader, you need to focus on the work that your faculty and staff do. She cautioned us that being busy is very different from being productive. She also said to leave is to live dangerously. So I'm going to live a little dangerously right now and share my ideas, my hopes, my vision, and my dreams for the upcoming academic year. Dr. Rivers' thoughts on the importance of promoting joy in our work and her description of the Institute for Health Improvements Framework for Improving Joy in Work relates to joyfulness of spirit, one of our Franciscan core values. Research from this framework supports having inner joy, prevents compassion fatigue, improves quality, and promotes inner peace and contentment. Here is a picture of the framework. My commitment to all of you is to continue to work on ways to make our environment more joyful. Remember that being joyful and being happy are two different things. Happiness has an external trigger and is based on other people, thoughts, events, and places. Although it's great to be happy, I want more than just happiness for our school of nursing. 
I am making a commitment for this year to focus on joy. Teaching nursing in today's environment is tough. However, caring and teaching are naturally joyful activities. Your compassion and dedication to provide the best nursing education to our students are huge assets that allow us to look at issues from different perspectives and arrive at innovative solutions. Joy allows us to find meaning and purpose and build resilience. Ensuring joy is a crucial component to promote effective change. We all have the right to experience joy and it is up to me to ensure you can enjoy that right. According to the current evidence, joyfulness in the workplace improves employee engagement, enhances satisfaction, and improves outcomes. I hope you are now willing to join me in my mission of creating a culture of joy at the School of Nursing. To accomplish this, I'm giving you the same homework Dr. Rivers gave to us at the ACN conference. Do a joy squad analysis for yourself. Look at what is inside of you and reflect on how you have become your best cheerleader or your worst enemy in experiencing joy. Remember, what we tolerate, we encourage. What we accept, we teach. What we permit, we promote. Are there any behaviors or actions that you have been accepting in yourself or others that have promoted an environment that is not joyful? What can you do to change or promote joy in your classroom, among your colleagues, within the school, and more importantly, in your own life? The responsibility to encourage and promote joy at our School of Nursing lies with me. But remember, joy comes from within. So I'm relying on all of you to ensure that we foster an environment that encourages teamwork, collaboration, and respectful dialogue, that has open lines of communication, and that is a fun and productive place to work. What do you do that brings you joy? Have you been taking the time to take care of yourself and do the things that make you joyful? If there is something that is keeping you from experiencing joy here, please come see me. I'm here to support you. If we work together as a team, I'm convinced that we will cross that finish line with our arms up, having not only a successful year, but more importantly, a very joyful one.